It's 8 p.m. and here are our top stories. An alarming trend in Colorado. Dozens of vehicles are stolen every day. They're the worst that, that I've seen in my, my 40 years. We're right up there at the top of the nation. Denver 7 investigates new data proving Colorado is among the worst in the nation for car thefts. Why it's impacting some local cities more than others. We are um, identifying stolen vehicles when they come into town. President Biden says he feels a Russian invasion is imminent. As of this moment, I'm convinced he's made the decision. When forces could hit Ukraine in the coming week or sooner. Our message to American citizens in Ukraine is to leave now. Boulder Strong, a new exhibit honoring the lives changed forever during the King Super shooting. It's important that we don't forget. Greeted by growls, home cameras capture an unexpected visitor. Good evening and thank you for watching Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Jessica Porter. I'm Danny New. The Denver Metro has become notorious for car thefts and new numbers prove that that reputation might be warranted. According to the Metropolitan Auto Theft Task Force, car thefts are up 113 percent since 2019 and on average 175 cars are stolen every day. Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski takes an in-depth look at the latest data, showing this trend is not the case for every community. I would describe it as epidemic. There's no question. More than prolific. Auto theft is a major problem in Colorado. It's a concern for every police department in the metro area. As we've reported, in the last two years, car thefts are up 113 percent. And according to the National Insurance Crime Bureau, Colorado leads the nation in the number of cars stolen. That's something that we need to get a better handle on. The latest figures show auto thefts were up again in 2021, with an average of 100 cars stolen per day statewide. Three years ago, it was half that. The auto theft problem just began to escalate and increase. Commander Mike Greenwell leads the Colorado Metropolitan Auto Theft Task Force, or CMAT, the team behind the numbers and law enforcement effort to investigate major car theft rings. There's a lot less consequences for auto theft, for property crimes in general. The new numbers show car thefts are up in every single metro area community, every single community except one. Castle Rock is not where you want to go if you're driving a stolen vehicle. Auto thefts are down 25% in Castle Rock. Why is Castle Rock making motor vehicle theft a priority? We are plagued with more property crime than anything else. Commander Jason Lyons credits these license plate readers for the decline. Over the last six months or so, it has been a, an absolute game changer for our organization. They alert police when a stolen car shows up in their community. Lyons says officers can then pull the car over and stop the person before they use that car to commit another crime. In an effort to prevent crime, not just work on solving it after it's occurred. On the flip side, we're actually seeing quite a lot here in Glendale. The city of Glendale topped the list for the number of stolen cars per 1,000 residents. We're very concerned that we're at the top of the list and we're doing everything we can to lower it. Lieutenant Jamie Dillon says most of the cars stolen are from people visiting Glendale. We have a very dense population, large parking lots, large parking structures, and huge opportunity for auto thieves. Huge opportunity. Thieves are taking from victims like Kara Shirley. I haven't parked my car in that garage for weeks now because I'm so scared. It's just so traumatic. Jennifer Kovaleski, Denver 7. And taking a closer look now, resources can be hard to come by for Denver Metro Police Departments. This is a look at just some of the numbers we received when we asked departments what their current staffing looks like. Denver Police currently has 170 open positions. When we asked DPD last December, they said they had 150 openings. Normally, DPD employs nearly 1,600 sworn officers. Aurora Police currently has 35 openings. And head to smaller departments like Golden, and there are only two jobs open right now. Despite a last ditch diplomatic push, President Biden says he believes Russia has decided to invade Ukraine. Russia has a choice between war and all the suffering it will bring or diplomacy that will make a future safer for everyone. Today, Russian controlled separatists in eastern Ukraine conducted what appears to be a false flag operation in their own territory, showing a car exploding in their capital as they announced mass evacuations. The U.S. has been warning for weeks that a false flag operation could be what it takes for Russia to launch an attack. We're calling out Russia's plans loudly and repeatedly, not because we want a conflict, but because we're doing everything in our power to remove any reason that Russia may give to justify invading Ukraine and prevent them from moving. President Biden, however, says it's not too late to return to the negotiating table and is urging Vladimir Putin to reach a peaceful resolution. 
A Greenwood Village nurse has turned himself in after being charged with manslaughter in the death of a patient in 2019. Greenwood Village police say Rex Meeker failed to properly monitor Emmalyn Wynn after administering anesthesia at Colorado, at Colorado Aesthetic and Plastic Surgery. Police say Emmalyn was not breathing for 15 minutes and that Meeker failed to call police after performing CPR. Wynn died following a 14-month-long coma. Dr. Joffrey Kim turned himself in earlier this week. He is facing charges of first-degree aggravated assault and criminally negligent homicide. Arapaho County deputies have arrested a volunteer coach at Arapaho High School for allegedly having inappropriate conversations with a female student on social media. 22-year-old Virgilio San Andres is now facing one felony count and deputies believe that there may be more victims and are asking anyone with information to call them. Next month will mark one year since 10 people were killed during the Table Mesa King Super shooting. Today, a new exhibit honoring the victims and those impacted opened in Boulder. It's called Boulder Strong, Still Strong, Remembering March 2021. Denver 7 CB Cotton was at the emotional opening ceremony and joins us with more. Jessica and Danny here at the Boulder Museum, an exhibit to remember the Boulder King Super shooting debuted tonight. Artifacts and portraits have been compiled in one place, so while people reflect, they can also try to heal. Artist Ross Taylor took these portraits, showcasing people that are in some way connected to the tragedy. There's law enforcement who responded to the incident, King Super's employees who survived the shooting, and others featured. Some of the photos are displayed on the walls of the exhibit, and others are featured in a slideshow. There's also signs, drawings, and mementos that were left behind at the store after the tragedy and later collected by museum staff. Those involved in this project say it's been a cathartic experience. It's humbling to be included with a group of people um, who are helpers, who are uh, who have had a profound impact on our community, and to be counted as one of those meant the world to me. And I thought, I want to do this. I want to be part of this. I hope it can be a space for healing. Uh, where people can come and see each other. And I think it really personalizes the experience. And I think we get to know Boulder itself better by seeing Boulder uh, in, in all these portraits. And the exhibit will run through April 10th. Museum leaders tell us they hope at some point to take a portion of the exhibit and incorporate it into their permanent collection. For Denver 7 News on Local 3, I'm CB Cotton. Thank you, CB. Former Douglas County Superintendent Corey Wise has obtained legal counsel to potentially sue the district. The new conservative majority board voted to fire Wise earlier this month, saying his vision for the district did not match up with theirs. Dozens of teachers called out in protest. The lawyers representing Wise have requested the district preserve any and all evidence related to Wise's firing and to prepare for possible litigation. Boulder County's mask mandate has come to an end after the Board of Health unanimously voted on Monday to end the indoor mask mandate. However, CU Boulder voted to continue mask requirements in an all indoor spaces on campus. And the mandate drops as cases and hospitalizations continue to plummet. Thursday, the state health department said that 90% of Coloradans may have immunity to Omicron. And then nationwide, 136,000 cases are being reported each day. A month ago, that number was over 850,000. Today, a senior advisor to the White House COVID-19 response team told Denver 7 that all signs point to a promising 2022. We're moving towards a time where we're going to be able to treat COVID uh, with strategies of prevention and protection of the vulnerable and treatment of the sick to a time where we're no, it will no longer be disruptive in our lives or as disruptive, it won't be a crisis. And promises aside, we've all heard this before, and the White House cautions that another major variant is always possible. And even as we say cases are dropping, they are, but there were also 77 deaths attributed to coronavirus yesterday in Colorado. Coming up on Denver 7 News at 8, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If you can't figure out who the seller is, who's, who's doing the auction, that should raise some questions for you. A mysterious auction promises high-end wares, but experts say it's buyer beware. And all kids out of the pool. CSU Spur is making therapy look like horseplay.
Having them work against the resistance of water improves their overall muscle strength. Plus, Mike Nelson has a look at your weekend forecast. Stay with us.